Yo, what the heck is popping YouTube? Welcome back to another tier list video. Uh, all right, so I am doing this because there is nothing else happening right now, okay? Um, we're all just waiting for the next uh, Sodi development, waiting for another T-Funk video part. I've heard there's maybe one or two, and then waiting for another Tyshawn video part. Uh, waiting for another Niger video part, waiting for another Louis Lopez video part, so we can all talk about that towards the end of the year, and everybody can pretend like Sodi's lame and boring and stupid, um, and then we can all just, like, only talk about that. Uh, Street League, uh, last weekend was the Super, you know, Mega Moron Championship. Welcome to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Today is the site of the 2022 SLS Super Crown World Championship. Any person that puts stuff out on the internet, you're bound to get comments that say, please come to Brazil. <laughs> Street League actually takes it seriously. And uh, who won it? Uh, Gustavo Ribeiro won. Here he is. Um, okay, Gustavo. I'm just going to start with Gustavo. Um, how I'm doing this, by the way, is I'm going to be ranking these skaters in terms of not only their skill level, but just entertainment factor you know because street league it's an entertainment product at the end of the day you know it's a television program it's definitely about who the best skater is but it's also about trying to create something that's suspenseful and entertaining that's why um there's a finals and it goes to like a final four and it's designed for everybody to be looking at the big handrail and then for somebody to clutch it out and then for them to get overscored like by half a point and then that ends up with some pyrotechnic celebration. The last contest I just want to say quickly for anybody that watched it um, was a total disaster scoring wise. The judges do this thing where they'll score they'll score things terribly and they'll be like oh no we kind of fucked that up didn't we and then they'll like score other things horribly to try to compensate for the fact that they scored something else horribly and then just creates this windy web of shit scores until you zoom out and the final product is just like what the fuck how was that a nine and that was an, an eight it's very frustrating to watch as a viewer and they also need to start adding um, on screen when they deduct points for sketchiness and how much they are deducting because they don't put that up and then you're just watching like okay well how much was deducted how bad like how sketchy was it it's just like there's a lot of improvements um, Street League can make so uh, anyway starting off with Gustavo Ribeiro okay um, Gustavo is like your quintessential boring as fuck contest skater his trucks are like so tight that uh, the nut is probably touching his hanger uh his his nuts are probably touching his hangers he only operates within like the most meta like typical um contest trick selection you know um he does bigger flip front board which is like oh my god it's so annoying okay the commentators every single time he does it they go oh my god gustavo ribeiro like andrew cannon's head explodes and there's just like fragmented pieces of like shiny mr clean skull all over the venue he does it first try every time he's been doing it for what feels like 10 years when is it gonna stop being shocking if your wife is banging another dude and you walk through the front door the first time you're like oh my god my wife's banging a fucking another guy after the eighth time you're like oh my god sweetie all right that's fucking enough i'm giving you a six this time um you've already proven to me that you can bang other dudes in the living room also he like crook nolly flips the shit out of everything also just another boring contest trick he loves doing tray flips um you know how in video games uh, like they've designed the controls so that it's with two sticks so you can try to like capture some of the magic um, of real skateboarding some of the personality and that's how they've designed video games so you can like you kind of catch it flick it a little bit differently to give it some character Gustavo Ribeiro's like tray flips are like the Tony Hawk fucking underground one or Tony Hawk pro skater one equivalent where you press one button and the trick looks exactly the same every single fucking time. He is good. His trick selection sucks. Uh, it's just really contesty and horrible to watch. I'm sure he's a fantastically kind young man. He's only 21 years old. He's just doing his job. I'm just doing my job. I always root against him because he is really just uncreative and has bad style. He, You've got to beat him, though. He's very consistent. The other elite dudes in the contest, if they're not, like, up to par, if they're not skating at a super high level, he'll just win because he will do the same five tricks and he will win every single time if nobody else steps up and takes it away from him. So I'd say he's, like, the third or fourth best dude, in my opinion, but he is really capable of winning because he is extremely consistent at the same boring fucking contest maneuvers. 
Ryan Desenzo, I love you. Wait, I put, what is this? Oh, I think I, okay, no, this is wrong. Okay, this is supposed to be Desenzo. Desenzo, and this is just supposed to be A tier, and this is just supposed to be S tier. Desenzo decent, um, nobody care. Um, okay, that's good. Desenzo is obviously in the top of the Desenzo tier. Um, that's why I made the tier for Ryan Desenzo. I used to hate on Ryan Desenzo a lot. Um, I used to be like, this guy sucks. He's doing too many front 180s. His video part has stupid music, which is all true. But when it comes to Street League, I fucking love Ryan Desenzo. He's 36 years old. Jesus Christ. He's 36. That's the same age as LeBron James and Drake. He's actually 37 now. Um, and his birthday is December 30th, so he's about to be fucking a 38. He's like a super old head, and what's crazy is he's only improved. He has been more competitive this year than I can ever remember. He always feels like an underdog, but he's been pulling through lately. Hurling tray bombs down sets, kickflip frontside nose blunting, bank to hubbas. He has been putting on, uh, like a fucking boss. Ryan Desenzo is a G. I'm sorry. There's no two ways around it. Mickey Papa. Oof. Um, nobody care, but also easily replaceable by nine-year-old, but also rubbish. Um, here's a problem with Mickey Papa. His boot too big for he damn foot. <laughs> he skates pretty decently. He always gets underscored. And honestly, I can't say that I blame the judges. You know, he is hard to take seriously. The proportions of his body are just a little queer. There's something uh, slightly off about about the way that he looks. I can't. Uh, I maybe rubbish is harsh because he's good, but he's just like he doesn't he doesn't have X factor. You know, nobody's got a fucking Mickey Papa poster in their room. Let's do uh, Deshaun Jordan. Um, Deshaun Jordan's good. It's every contest. It's a head-to-head -head battle, literally, um, him versus Andrew Cannon to see who is the baldest, and it's a fucking nail-biter every single time. Um, yeah, this dude has two drink sponsors. Uh, he's sponsored by Essentia and Ashok, so he's probably pissing, like, nine times a day. I love Deshaun. I'm a fan of his skating. He's super fun to watch. It's good to make a comparison between, like, him and Gustavo Ribeiro. They both do tray flip 50-50s. When Gustavo tray flip 50-50s, you're like, ew, gross. Um, yuck. I want to give that a four. But when Deshaun Jordan does it, you're like, oh, awesome, Deshaun Jordan. That was a cool trick. Uh, I want to give you a nine. What? And that's why putting numbers on skateboarding is, is kind of, I guess, a difficult and maybe like a pointless task. I personally would give Deshaun a higher score for Trey Flip 50-50 than Gustavo Ribeiro um, because I like Deshaun more than Gustavo Ribeiro, um, but Gustavo's better. My thing with Deshaun is like, dude, you need to learn some new moves. I'm actually surprised that the judges still give him a nine for like laser flipping sets. It's like, yeah, that's that's sick, but like, he does it every single contest. I think Deshaun would be wise to to hit the lab and pick up some new maneuvers because I don't think that he's really actually like a competitive threat at this point. Um, Jamie Foy, mm, sorry, nobody care. Uh, you guys are going to be pissed because Jamie Foy is one skater of the year and they do this with every street dude. Same with Mark Suchu. Um, where are you, Mark? Also, nobody care. These street dudes, they, they get on. And I think Street League loves, like, the optics of having street skaters participate in their contest. So they, like, overscore them. And the, the commentators, every single time, they go, Oh, yeah, Mark Suchu, ripper in the streets and on the course. Oh, yeah, Mark. 8.6. They just, they fucking love it, dude. Um, they say the same shit every time. Honestly, all Jamie Foy is really good for in a street league contest is like finding a really long rail and then like with a kink or two in it and hopefully doing a front crook pop shove it out. Both of these guys, Mark and Jamie Foy, to be honest, they're both like kind of non pluses for me. I think they get like slightly overscored because of their street cred or whatever, which is understandable, but it also doesn't really matter that much because neither of them are actually like, you know, um, capable, I don't think, of, of winning a street league. Maybe Jamie Foy could have like. Maybe Jamie, and I don't even, I'm not fact checking any of this shit. I'm just talking out of my ass and like of my own personal experience watching the event. I'm not checking the scores or anything, but maybe Jamie Foy could win if he has a really good contest. He's certainly scarier than Mark Suchu is.
Um, and this is, if you're wondering, this is a photo of Jamie Foy's legs. I think it's hilarious that he is modeling. This did not make me want to buy his pro model dickies. Let's do, let's do Schmidler. Ooh, I love Alex Schmidler, dude. I'm not, I ain't even finna cap. I ain't even finna cap. I became very big fan of Alex Schmidler. But this is what y'all wanted, right? To me, big fan of Alex Congratulations. When Alex Midler shows up to the contest, you already know it's lit. So he looks like he's been having a, he had like a bit of a full send evening with the boys the night before. Looks a bit dehydrated, a little sweaty, eyes are bloodshot. He steps onto the course and he fucking, he's, he's all or nothing, baby. He's ready to try to hurl himself down a stair set uh, with a 270 back lip. Either the dude lives or he dies. Bruh. He goes balls to the walls. Sometimes he lands it. Sometimes he eats shit. Either way, I'm like, fuck yeah, Midler, baby. I just want to say Midler's build is fascinating. 80% of his body mass is stored from like his hips to his shoulders. He is a fucking beefcake. He's sponsored by Guess and they put him in these like Letterman Guess jackets and he, he he's just fucking massive. <laughs> he looks like he's wearing fucking football pads under there. Big Midler fan. Let's do Joslyn. What Joslyn does that is fun is he does tricks that are like, mm, they're not like everybody else's tricks. You know, pretty much everybody's just like taking turns, jerking off next to the handrail, um, trying to do some stupid grind trick on it. Uh, then like they have some kicker on the side of the course in the corner. Chris is doing like a ghetto bird or a nollie 360 heel flip fatty to flatty. <laughs> He just, he represents something in the contest that like almost nobody else is doing because typically it doesn't get scored that well. But recently they've been scoring it a little bit better. Um, He's just doing like entertaining, full send, like bigger, bigger spin flip down the stair sets and shit. Um, I like Joslyn, brings something kind of unique to the contest. He can like keep his head above water in the run section too. Um, he's a good dude to have and he can, he can get like third place sometimes and shit. Dude, Tommy Finn is so replaceable by a Japanese nine-year-old. It's insane. The only reason about the only reason I even remember Tommy Finn's like existence in this in these contests is because the way his hat stands on his head, I always am like, why is it so tall? Like, what is he hiding up there? Basically, like if Street League was a movie, you would roll the credits and Tommy Finn wouldn't even be mentioned by name. He would be listed as skater number eleven. Um he's there at every contest, just clocking in, clocking out putting on a painfully mediocre performance and people are gonna be like, Tommy Finn's fucking good. Yeah, he is good. He's definitely a good skater, but within the street league contest, he's not good compared to the rest of these dudes. He seems like a tremendous gentleman. Send it down to Alex White, who's standing by with Tommy Finn, our leader. Hey guys, I'm down here with Tommy. Just put out a plan B video part. I've just been working on that. But um, I got married recently and I had a kid recently, so did some, some live hammers. <laughs> So yeah, what a nice guy. Still don't care. <laughs> Sorry, Tommy Finn, to put you down here. Um, I'll see you same time next year um, in ninth place. Okay, Brayden Hoban. All right, this motherfucker, dude. Brayden Hoban has, like, gotten really popular in skating, like, really fast. And the reason is because he's just, he's really fucking good. He is a threat every single time to win the contest now. He's up in, like, the elite bracket of skaters. The thing about Brayden and the reason I've kind of been hating on him a little bit and giving him some shit is because he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, he pulls up to the contest. He's got on like some tattered doors, vintage t-shirt, polar pants, um, some shitty America slip-ons. He like hasn't showered in three days and his hair looks like Hermione Granger's from the first fucking Harry Potter movie. Then he gets out there and he lands every single like kickflip into grind trick that he tries. So you're looking at him like at first you're like, oh yeah, I'm rooting for this guy. This guy's core. He's putting it on. He's, he's just like me. No, 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 no. He's nothing like you, man. Brayden Hoban is not like you. His approach to skating is like uh, the self-proclaimed male feminist guy who shows up to the party with like an acoustic guitar. He corners some girls and he's like, yeah, me and my mom actually just, we went over 
over to Bali and we picked up trash on the beach and like volunteered at the orphanage. And then we flew back over to the States and uh, did the slut walk where we marched against a misogynistic local government spinning game like that for two and a half hours. Next thing you know, his hands down someone's pants. <laughs> I'm not saying Brandon Hovon does that. All I'm saying is he's not what he presents himself to be. Um, he's a little too good to be wearing those Americas, you know what I'm saying? He should really be wearing uh, some Nikes, you know? Even his tattoos, I think, are all part of this complex psyop. He's got, like, a, a minivan tattoo and then just, like, a shaka, you know? It's, like, they're they're all things that are, like, they're designed to convince you, like, oh, he's just a regular guy. He's not a regular guy, dude. He's kickflip, backside, nose blunting, first or second try, the biggest thing on the fucking course. He's not your friend. He is your enemy. Do not take your eyes off him or he will stab you in the back of the head. Matt Berber. Matt Berger. Crazy hamburger! Crazy hamburger! This is horrible! Um, Matt is boring. I'm sorry. Also, easily replaceable by a nine-year-old. He dresses in all black. His skateboard looks weird. He has a weird-looking skateboard every single time. It looks way too small. It looks like it has, like, a 10-inch wheelbase. <laughs> fucking bizarre so every time i watch him skate even though he does some cool tricks he does like heel flip back tail and stuff i'm always like mm, i don't know like matt berger i'm not gonna put him in easily replaceable by japanese nine-year-old because he's better than both of these dudes i think maybe he's not better than mickey papa but it's close but i'm gonna put him over here um, with these guys. Let's do Yuto. Okay, Yuto's obviously in the top tier. He is an S tier elite level skateboarder. The problem with Yuto recently um, is that he looks bored. You know, he looks like the prince who has every single thing um, that he asks like delivered to him within a snap of his own fingers. So it's like the novelty of having grapes uh, delivered instantaneously has like totally worn off. You know, the last contest, he's just been floating around like a ghost. Um, his facial expression does not change whether he lands on his tricks or he bails. He looks completely disenchanted and disinterested with the task at hand. He looks like he could give less of a fuck about the outcome of these events. Unquestionably, the product is significantly more entertaining when Yuto cares and when Nija is in there. So we'll see once Nija comes back if Yuto like comes out of his slump. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, unquestionably, like Yuto is amazing for contest skateboarding because Nija has been the best forever. We needed somebody that was as good as Nija, who was maybe like more, I guess, more typically like skater, like cool than Nija was, even though I think Yuto is like, just does kind of the safest shit possible. Like he wears dunks, polar pants, Nike t-shirt, you know, he's very, very easy to root for. But outside of his like skate guy uniform, his style is amazing. Excellent trick selection brought like tricks to the table. Nobody had ever seen before, like Nolly 270 nose slide. I mean, just amazing fucking skateboarding tricks that he can do incredibly consistently that nobody else can do. He's on a really, really, really high level um, and does a lot of this shit effortlessly. Yeah, Yuto's in the S tier. It's hard not to root for Yuto, I think. Shane O'Neill. Okay, Shane O'Neill's a fucking pain in the ass, man. Uh, I'm putting Shane in the rubbish tier, dude. I'm pissed at Shane O'Neill. He's one of the most frustrating dudes to watch because he has the technical skill level of competing like in the elite class with like Nija and Yuto and Gustavo Ribeiro. Um, he's that good. But he is such a little b when it comes to competing in these contests. Like, if things don't go his way off rip, if he doesn't land every single switch flippity fact tail shove in his line and he doesn't get a 9.6 immediately, he just goes off and mopes into the crowd and like sits down do you even want to be here like i don't know why shane just if you don't want to skate these things man go home and play call of duty and skate the, your backyard skate park like he looks more disinterested than yuto he just like whatever nija's routine is in the morning you know nija wakes up and he's like let's get it we're sending today we're sending he like goes and skates a fucking street 11 stair and then goes to street league and fucking wins you know nija has that like kobe mamba mentality thing that some dudes have where they just have to get up in the morning and fucking eat people for breakfast. Shane O'Neill is like the polar opposite of that. If his fucking eggs are, are, are prepared in the wrong way in the morning, like he just lets that fucking
fucking dominate the rest of his day. I would love to root for Shane O'Neal, but it's just fucking devastating every time. You put even the slightest amount of faith in Shane, and he will let you down every single time. Vincent Malou. All right, top of the A tier. I love Vincent Malou. Thankfully, Vincent is not on Globe anymore. He's got a new sh shoe sponsor. He's on Adidas now, which is great for him. Like, his skill level is somewhat being reflected by the quality of his sponsors at this point in his career. Now all he has to do is fucking get off pizza skateboards. What I like about Vincent is essentially almost the entire meta of contest skating is backside and it's evolved that way because backside tricks, a lot of them have the appearance of being more difficult, but with a lot of practice, you can land very consistently. Kickflip back tail, kickflip back lip, um, you know, tricks like that, back smith. Um, a lot of these like indoor skate park contesty moves, they're all backside. What Vincent does is he completely like disrupts that meta and that standard. He does frontside tricks that are harder to pull off than their, their backside counterparts. So he'll do like kickflip front lip or kickflip frontside tail. Because of the way that like you have to hoist yourself over, getting into those tricks frontside is a lot gnarlier and it looks a lot harder. Vincent also like dresses in a way that's not super obnoxious. It's like pretty understated. He looks like he's going for like a mid-level job interview every single time he's skating street league. He's one of my favorite dudes to root for and he's actually competitively viable. If he has a good outing, he can definitely place. Uh, he can't keep his fucking tongue inside of his mouth. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting uh, Vincent in the in the top of the eight tier. I think he's really entertaining and I respect his approach to contest skating. You know, he could go out and like, I'm sure he has energy drink companies begging to put a fucking patch on his shirt and he'd probably be wise to accept those contracts, but he's not doing it. He's keeping his shit Pretty chill, which I think is very, very respectable. Aurelien Giroux, the other French guy on this list. Uh, you know, it's hard to know really where to place Aurelien. He's been kind of absent lately. Um, his street footage is ass. Like, his style is like, he is just like a jock to the max, you know? In general, Street League is a really jock-oriented, jock-centric event, but like, Vincent really just fucking cranks it up to the next level, dude. I have zero desire to see this guy do anything but skate in a street league. Like, watching his street footage is nails on a chalkboard. It's awful. In street league, I don't know, it's kind of lit when he does the hard flip front board, you know? Um, when he lands, he, he lets his body go like that. He's... <laughs> All right, for my veteran alcohol drinkers out there, I've invented a new uh, game uh, that's guaranteed to get you absolutely fucking hammered. Um, you will not be able to walk after you try this drinking challenge. Watch uh, Aurelian's new street part. Every single time he lands, like he just got shot with a tranquilizing dart, uh, you have to take a shot. He's so fucking obnoxious, man. But I kind of love him at the same time. The whole thing with this list is like, you can complain, but it's also, like, it's impossible to complain too much because, like, the big the big parts of these dudes' personalities that what make them kind of annoying are also what make them fun in, the, in a contest format, you know? Street League is about entertainment, you know? You don't turn on a TV show where every single person on it is, like, equally likable, you know? That sucks. You need protagonists and you need antagonists. You need people to root for and you need people to root against. I'm not saying I always root against um, Aurelien Giroux, but he's a good option. Um, I'm going to put him, I'm going to put him over here next to, uh, next to Ryan. He's, he's pretty, he's a pretty entertaining guy on the contest, uh, circuit. Manny Santiago is rubbish, dude. Every single time. The only thing he's good for is seeing what color he's dyed his hair that week. He just like tries to varial heel flip into something and then doesn't land it. And then he's fucking eliminated. Okay. Carlos Ribeiro. I love Carlos. Great skater, beautiful family, rock solid all around. Last part in the primitive video. When it comes to contests, usually he doesn't perform that well. I'd say like maybe once or twice a year, he does pretty decently. He's not conniving in any way. He just plays it straight. Um, and skates, you know, it doesn't seem like it's like life or death for him. You know, he's just a very easy dude to root for. Okay. Um, Jagger. All right. Jagger goes in the top of the A tier. Um, here's the thing about Jagger. Okay. Yes. Jagger style is horrible. I know that better than anybody. Many of my early YouTube videos are dedicated to trashing Jagger for his terrible style on the skateboard and also off the skateboard. You guys remember after the Olympics when he fucking clutched the bronze medal.
You would have thought he uh, he he won gold in four categories. The way that that uh, ballooned his ego to the size of a, a, a fucking blimp. Those late night talk shows, he did that one with David Spade. You look at a suit like this uh, and hair like that, and it's really not that mysterious why the Middle East wants to eliminate the United States of America. That guy is not living on the same plane of reality as the rest of us. His style is ass. It's terrible. It's robotic. It's the same like Wingardium Liviosa fucking, you know, Harry Potter spell arm movement every single time. But what I'm going to give Jagger a little bit of credit for, I'm going to cut him a little bit of slack, is he's an indoor skate park a uh, skate dad kid, which means that he developed this style not because it's probably how he wants to skate. This is a matter of survival. You know, if your dinner was contingent on whether or not you landed the next kickflip back lips down the handrail, you'd probably develop some not so aesthetically pleasing habits as well. Jagger's all about performance because he had to be. You know, this shit was life or death. Um, his dad is waiting in the, the corners of the skate park with a belt. He's got to land that shit. He doesn't care how he looks. Jagger's really good at contest skating. Um, he's pretty fucking consistent. Sometimes he doesn't do well, but usually he does. He's really good in the run section. The other thing about Jagger, as painful as it is to admit, low key, and this just totally fucking like breaks what he feels like he represents as a skater. Sometimes he has some like tasteful swag tricks. The stupid UFC like arena contest with that like course that was for ants what is this a course for ants he did switch front feeble back 180 um through the kink off on that and i was like ooh, that was a little bit of a sick maneuver i can't i cannot tell a lie jagger maybe popped off with that one yeah sometimes he comes through like with the switch back nose blunts and stuff like you hate to admit it you don't want to give him any credit but he he has some, like, sneakily, like, sick tricks under his belt. He's not in the super elite class, but he's about as close as you can get, I would say. Felipe Gustavo, dude, um... This guy, every time he, like, does the same shit at the contest, which is he wears his gray Red Bull beanie, that Adidas long sleeve with the stupid prints on, on the side of it, um, and he wears, like, some joggers, and then he just, like, rolls up two miles per hour to, like, the second biggest hubba at the park and tries to do, like, switch flip nose grind until he lands it or doesn't land it. His skating is boring. He's not exciting. I mean, that's just what happens when you skate slow as shit, you know? Uh, your skating ends up looking pretty boring. Another guy that skates pretty slow, but I would say kind of gets shafted by the judges a little bit is Felipe Mota. I think he does hard tricks, and I think he's consistently kind of, like, underscored. I think the judges, judges are like a little bit ageist against him maybe there's some beef there or something i don't really understand but i i have a lot of memories of me being like that doesn't seem like a fair score as far as the judges are concerned about felipe nobody care he almost never makes it into the finals i feel like when maybe sometimes he should uh let's do fucking what's your name dude uh jesus christ who the fuck is that guy Kelvin Hoffler, man. I used to like Kelvin quite a bit. I used to root for him pretty consistently, but he's just like, basically his like bushings look like they're made of rocks. And then he just jumps on his skateboard and tries to do like some sort of fakey 270 variation into like whatever hubba or rail. He wears all black monster hat, Karyuma t-shirt with like a flight deck. Is He's just like... Ugh. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't, I definitely don't hate the guy for sure. I'll put him over here. I definitely do not hate him at all. I think he's just been doing the same fakey maneuvers for too long and it's getting kind of hard to defend him anymore. So I'm going to put him over here. He's still kind of fun when he's in the mix, but he needs to shake it up a little bit. I think he needs to like, he needs to like take a vacation or something. Sora Shirai. Part of my problem with Sora is that I feel like I've said this before, I'll say it again. I think he was meant to wear skinny jeans. I think that his style would be just so much more epic um, if he was wearing like some skin tight fucking Volcom jeans or something. But he wears like these like really baggy clothes and everybody's gonna be like, skinny jeans, what are you talking about? But until you actually like, until you actually were able to see what I see, we're not gonna be on the same page. But Sora, he's, he's, 
he's fucking good. Um, the pro like he he has some like really different tricks. His style is like a little bit wonky. His hair looks like XQCs, which is like sort of a problem. I'd say it's like 50 50 whether or not he has a good performance. But when he does have a good performance, like he did at that course that looked like the fucking uh, neoliberal urgent care facility, fakey 270 back tail. Um, big spin out. That was fucking sick. Like, that's what Kelvin Hoffler should be working on, you know? Shirai, attempt one. Oh! I'm going to put Sora over here. I like Sora a lot. Um, I just think he... Yeah, he if he could be a little bit more consistent, he'd, he'd definitely be a, bi a bigger threat. Last but not least, of course, the fucking king. Um... I know I'm a big Nija hater, but the reality is I need Nija. You probably need Nija too if you like Street League. You don't miss anybody nearly as much as you miss Nija. It's a fucking tragedy when he's not there. I'm just going to be honest. Nobody has been better, more clutch, more fucking consistent. Nija pulls rabbits out of the hat at the last second more than like anybody i mean any fucking sport like nija i think is like in that class of person that lives for he just lives f for competition that's just the kind of guy that he is and he happens to be a skateboarder i sound like one of those commentators that's like nija 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 but it's fucking true like if i were to say anything otherwise i would just be like completely bullshitting like yes he did um he did shit the bed at the olympics that happens, so we'll see what happens at the next one. But in Street League, generally, in contest skating, Nigel's the fucking best, you know? And he hasn't, like, maintained only the same couple of tricks. Like, a lot of these dudes do. A lot of these guys do the same couple of tricks so that they're really exciting in the beginning, and then they kind of get boring once uh, once you sort of figure them out, sort of like Kelvin Hoffler, kind of. Um, Nija has continue to evolve and develop new tricks he goes and he skates he figures out new stuff to do to surprise the judges and to surprise the audience even though everyone is fucking rooting against him which is good you should root against the best dude i hate the people that are like i love the best guy i love the golden state warriors when the fucking golden state warriors drafted kevin durant um even though they already won a championship and they had steph curry and fucking clay thompson fuck that what the warriors ha are good for and what nigel houston is good for is there you want to you fucking root against them you know you can appreciate how good they are but you also you want to fucking root against them uh, I guess the difference is that Nija's just one guy, but, you know, um, I like Nija. The way that he dresses, he dresses like an asshole because he is an asshole. He skates like an asshole. What can you say? Nija's probably, it's pretty likely I would say that Nija will be the most prolific and dominating contest skater in our lifetime. These two, head-to-head, -head, this is what, this is, this is contest skating. This is why we pay the big bucks or, or we don't pay the big bucks. We use a VPN to stream uh, SLS on YouTube instead of paying ESPN plus. There you have it. That's my list. It's kind of weirdly like pretty well formatted. I think I didn't intend for it to look this symmetrical, but there you go. Um, thanks for watching guys. Appreciate it. Um, hopefully this wasn't too stupid or if it was, I don't give a shit. Um, I'll see you next video. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Dragons have invaded Dave and Buster.